News uh, that was confirmed by the National Prosecuting Authority this morning uh, that uh, a notice of withdrawal by Magdalene Munsami, who was on watching brief uh, for Kelly Kumalo, that notice of withdrawal has been submitted uh, to the National Prosecuting Authority. I understand, Aldrin, that this was already done in May. While I don't know the extent of the reasons that were given thus far, I do understand that part of those reasons may be due to uh, what I understand understand is a lack of a further instruction, but the National Prosecuting Authority confirming that indeed uh, Magdalene Munsami has uh, uh, put in that notice of withdrawal to the National Prosecuting Authority. What uh, uh, this essentially means that Magdalene Munsami, who had been on a watching brief on behalf of Kelly Kumalo, who you know was one of the people that was inside the house at the time that Senzo Meiwa was killed, uh, will no longer uh, essentially be represented Kelly Kumalo, this notice of withdrawal to the National Prosecuting Authority means that there will be no further legal representation uh, pertaining to that. Uh, of course, it had been on a watching brief on behalf of uh, Kelly Kumalo. But coming back to issues, uh, Aldrin, that you spoke about in your intro with regard uh, to what's taking place inside this court now. Indeed, yesterday, the first witness in this new trial uh, took the stand uh, yesterday. That is Zandi Kumalo. Uh, of course, you would know she was also one of the individuals that was inside the house at the time that Senzo Mayua was killed back in 2014. And she began by giving details of what she says transpired on that evening. She painted a picture of uh, two uh, alleged intruders that had gone inside the house. One, she says, had been brandishing a firearm, who had come inside and demanded cell phones and money. And, uh, you know, it was Longwe Twala, she said says who was her boyfriend at the time, who was uh, a part of those uh, who stood up first and basically pushed uh, one of the alleged intruders towards the kitchen area. There'd been a scuffle that had taken place there. She at some point had managed to run towards the bathroom. Uh, Tumelo Mazala, she says, uh, who you would know is Senzo Meiwa's longtime friend, had managed to run into one of the bedrooms. And she says after she'd stayed there and tried to assess what was going on, she heard one of uh, uh, the gunshots are going off. She says one of those gunshots had basically, uh, uh, or the bullets had hit the ground and it basically grazed her on her foot. And at some point then she managed to run towards the bathroom. She says she stayed there for a little bit and managed to try and uh, peep through uh, what was taking place. And at some point, uh, you know, after she had peeped, she saw that uh, Senzo Meiwa had been lying on the ground. Uh, her mother uh, was also also there as well as uh, Kelly Kumalo and when she'd come out she saw that Senzo Meiwa had been bleeding uh, towards this particular area and uh, she says then uh, at some point she uh, ran out of the house after uh, she found that uh, these alleged intruders had uh, left. She ran towards the house of one of uh, the neighbors, uh, Maggie Peary, and uh, once she got there, she tried to explain to them uh, that, uh, you know, uh, Senzo Miwa had been shot. She says, prior to her running out of the house, when the intruders had come in and demanded uh, cell phones and money, she says she managed to hide her cell phone behind one of the cushions uh, on the couch on which she was sitting. And when she came out of the bathroom, she remembered that she had hidden it. She took it. And as she had been running uh, out of uh, the house, she uh, thought to call 10 triple one uh, to try and get assistance. But she says she just had a mental block ran out of the house, and when she had got uh, outside, uh, she ran towards the house of Maggie Peary, where she also found a lady by the name of Ntabi Singh. When she explained to them, she says they were crying. They also seemed confused. She ran back to the house again, and when she got there, there had been two individuals uh, who had been carrying Senzo Meiwa into a vehicle. She also described saying that struggled to get Senzo Meiwa into that vehicle. She says at some point, she got into that vehicle and also tried to help and pull him in. She says that placed him uh, in the center of the back seat um, after that managed uh, to get Senzo Meiwa inside that vehicle. She also described
described a towel which she says she does not remember where it had come from. That towel had been used to compress the wound of Asenzo Meiwa. And then just before court adjourned yesterday, she had spoken about how Kelly Kumalo had then subsequently uh, driven fast, she says, uh, to the hospital, Aldrin. Yeah. And just quickly remind us, Criselda, around the short adjournment yesterday as well, when Judge Mohuateng was basically saying that if he doesn't find the accused guilty on murder, he might find them guilty on culpable homicide. And there seemed to have been some sort of objection to that. Well, that's right, Aldrin. You would know that as this trial is starting anew or is starting afresh, the accused were also asked to plead yesterday and all of them pleaded not guilty. This is the normal way that things would be done. If you have a trial that is starting from, from scratch, the accused would be asked to plead once again, which they did. They pleaded not guilty. But then when accused one was asked to stand up and asked, uh, uh, you know, whether he understood, uh, you know, the contents of, uh, you know, uh, also some of the, the admissions that had been made, um, you know, uh, he had basically said he didn't understand. And, uh, you know, the legal representatives, when we took that adjournment, uh, the, um, the, the, the presiding judge had basically asked the legal representatives to consult uh, with uh, their clients to ask them or to further explain to them, you know, what um, uh, the possibilities would be in this instance. The presiding judge, of course, uh, giving uh, several, uh, you know, uh, examples to say that, well, fine, if it is found then that, uh, you know, you would not be found guilty of murder, uh, uh, hypothetically speaking, or, uh, for example, if you're found uh, guilty of culpable homicide, uh, their legal representatives would then need to explain to them what these different scenarios would be, uh, for lack of a better word, or even in layman's terms. So that is what then uh, that adjournment was about, where the legal representatives went to go and explain to their clients. Uh, what the different scenarios or possibilities would be and whether they actually understand that, uh, you know, whatever those scenarios may be, the, their clients also need to understand uh, whatever the probabilities may be. Okay. And just a quick final one, um, recapping on the breaking news that you just shared with us. I remember during the first phase of uh, the first trial, that is, when um, Magdalene Monsami was yeah. in court, there was objection to her being in court and also uh, following the proceedings. She did indicate at the time that she was there on a watching brief. Do we know as yet what implications this decision to file that notice of withdrawal would have on the trial, if anything at all, and also on uh, Kelly Kumala's own testimony, if she will be called? Well, Aldrin, from, uh, from my lay understanding is that that notice of withdrawal that uh, uh, Magdalene Monsami has uh, sent to the National Prosecuting Authority, which the NPA confirms indeed uh, was submitted to it, and this was in May already, uh, basically means that Magdalene Monsami will no longer be on a watching brief for Kelly Kumalo. Indeed, you are correct. Uh, towards the beginning of the first trial, which of course has now been nullified, uh, she was inside this court on a watching brief uh, for Kelly Kumalo. There had been objections to that. You would recall, of course, she'd been sitting just right here behind me where the legal counsel who are representing uh, those in this matter would be. But then there had been some objection to that, that she perhaps sit in the gallery then if she was on watching brief for Kelly Kumalo. The trajectory of what we're seeing now, Aldrin, is that with the start of this new trial, with Zandi Kumalo being one of the individuals who was inside the house at the time that uh, Senzo Mayu was killed is that we see possibilities that the state may continue on that uh, trajectory. We might possibly see other individuals who were inside the house at the time that uh, Mayor was killed being called after her. But I mean, this trial could go anyway. We don't know what is going to happen next. And also, we also need to thread very carefully, Aldrin, you would recall, it had been instruction of this court not to announce any of the witnesses that will be appearing here until they take a to the witness box. So very difficult for us to opine or even say who will be next after Zandi Kumalo because uh, we can only deduce from the trajectory that the state is taking at this particular instance and in that while we are inside the house now, uh, if I can put it that way, we are now on a witness that was there when Senzo Meiwa was killed. 
we might see them call another witness that was also inside the house at the time that Mayowa was killed. From what we do know, it was Zandi Kumalo who was inside the house, Longwe Twala, who was her boyfriend at the time, Mtogo Zisi Twala, who was Senzo Mayowa's friend, Zandi Kumalo and Kelly Kumalo's mother, Kelly Kumalo, as well as uh, uh, Dumelo Mathala and Mtogo Zisi Twala as well. Uh, Mathala as well as Mtogo Zisi Twala have been long-time friends of uh, Senzo Mayowa. So perhaps that's what we can deduce only, Aldrin, from what what we're seeing now is that there's a possibility that the next witnesses might be those who were inside the house at the time that Mayewa was killed. But very difficult to even say who would be called next because we also have to thread very carefully in ensuring due to some of the issues that have been raised by this court in the previous trial in saying that uh, you know there are people that fear for their lives of course this particular case have been of, has been of huge interest not just here in South Africa but around the world and many people you know have been watching very closely what will come out of this court so very difficult for us to say you know who will be ca called next um, who's likely to be called next but we can only deduce Aldrin from what we see at the stage that a high likelihood I guess you know given that we're inside the house uh, the next plausible uh, 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 people or persons to be called would be people that were also inside the house at the time that the soccer star was murdered.